In the past couple of training videos, we learned how to add form fields. Now we want to lock or protect the form, because once protected, not only does it lock it from anybody making changes to the form, well, the properties of the form fields, like with the double click, to bring up the properties for last name, or with the right click, to also bring up the properties for the last name, but they can then fill in the form fields with actual data. So it'll be in data entry mode and not edit mode. So to go ahead and protect the form, we can do it one of a couple of ways. You can either come up here and click on the Developer tab, go to the Protect group and click on Restrict Editing, or you can also access it from the Review tab to the Protect group, Restrict Editing, same task pane. Just go down to number two and check the box, allow only this type of editing in this document, and make sure you got selected Filling in Forms. And then you can go ahead and start enforcing the protection. When you do that, you can do it with or without a password. Well, if I do it without a password and I click Okie Dokie, it's now in data entry mode, so I can come over here and click on select one, and oh my goodness, look at that, that is so cool. I can now select one. But if I'm like, you know what, I want to make changes to it, or anybody else does, when they come over here and click on stop protection, they don't need a password. And they can just come up here, double click, and say, you know what, I don't like Mr. in there, I just want Mrs. or Miss. Well, we don't want that to happen, so... Well, let's go ahead and enforce it again, but this time type in a password that they'll never get, P-A-S-S, -S, and then type it in again to confirm it, then click on OK or hit the Enter key. We're now in protection mode, so if they want to go ahead and make changes and they try to stop it, they have to have the password. Oh well, let's go ahead and click Cancel. They can't do that. And let me close out of the task pane, and let's start filling in our form. Select one, let's do Mr., and to go to the next field, just hit the tab key on the keyboard, type in me, and then when you go to the next field, you can, of course, go ahead and click in it, but when you start typing in your name, well, now it's inserted that in addition to the text that's already there, and that's not going to work. Let me triple click to select it and just type over it. That's easier. And then do you recall the zip code field that we added help for that field? that they can either view down in the status bar when the field is selected, five digits only please, or this form will self-destruct, or they can also hit the F1 key on the keyboard, and oh my goodness, you get your own customized window, isn't that so tinsel? Well, the only problem is, is that if they don't know about the F1, hitting it in a certain field to get help, or looking down below in the status bar, well, they may need a little training. In any case, I'll let you do that. Let's go ahead and type in a zip code. And then anything that takes longer than six weeks, we won't do. Let's do six weeks. Yes, it's common. No comments. And then with the checkboxes down below, you can also tab to them. So there's the first one. You can see it's bold. You can hit the space bar to add an X. Hit the space bar again to remove it. And hit the tab key to go to the next. Or, of course, you can use the mouse. And congratulations, you just filled in your first form. Isn't that exciting? Well, what do you want to do next? If this is an actual client, I guess you can come up here and do a save as, and save it as Mr. Kirk Kershaw, client number one, in which case you keep the original untouched protect form, but I'm thinking I want to save this, well not this one here, this is just an example, but I want to clean it up and go back to the way it was and save it as a template. As you recall my templates training video, that way I can go ahead and when I want to fill out a new form, I can just select the template and it will create a copy of the template as a document for me to go ahead and fill in and never overwrite the original or the template. For me it's a lot easier to do it that way and have it organized than to always go out and find the form protect document and use that because when you want to create a new document based upon a template you just go backstage. So to save this as a template let's go ahead and unprotect it. Let's see we're on the review tab so we can go to the protect group and restrict editing to stop. P-A-S-S, -S, hit enter, and then we got to clean these fields up. I mean, you could leave them with my information here, but I think it's helpful for the front-end user to not have to look at my information and replace it with somebody else's. And so to go ahead and reset these fields with the original text in it, you can come up here to the Developer tab, go to the Controls group, click on the Legacy Tool box, and go to the Eraser. Reset Form Fields. Click on it. It's back to where it was. Cool. And then we can go ahead and start enforcing the protection. And I'm not going to type in a password. Let me just click okie dokie, close out of here, and then to save it as a template, 
Let's come up here on the Quick Access Toolbar, click on Save As, or you can go backstage, file the Save As to open up the Save As window. Change it from a document to a template. Well, I already got one there, my spiffy invoice. Well, this one's going to be my spiffy new client form. Go ahead and click Save. And then let's close out of here. So when we're ready and we got a new client, let's just go ahead and open up Word, double click, and then go backstage because that's where templates can be found. File to New personal templates. There you go, my spiffy new client form. Isn't that spiffy? Click on it. And there you go. And let's just start filling it in. Let's say it's Mrs. Get the tab key. Yay, we got a new client. And then we followed up with a phone call. Cool. And you can see up there on the title bar, it's a generic name, so it's going to force us to do a save as. It's not the template, so we won't overwrite the original, the template. Come up here, click on save. Forces the save as. Of course, we can change it to a template and go back to the templates folder and overwrite our template, but we're not going to do that. That's the whole purpose of doing it this way so we don't accidentally overwrite, which you have to go out of your way to select the type as a template. In any case, let's go ahead and scroll up to the desktop, and this is going to be my new spiffy client dot warner. Click Save, title bar, awesome. And then if you want to go ahead and add a new client, again, file, new, personal, my spiffy new client, and then go ahead and fill it in. Let me close out of here and not save it. Now if at some future point you want to be able to take this data like in this form and import it into another database like Excel, Access, or any database for that matter, it's best that we export it into a plain text file because when it comes to formatting, well databases don't like a bunch of formats that it doesn't understand imported into it. It may reject it, if not in part, all of it, or have some funny information come over. So to go ahead and export this into a plain text file without all the formatting and all the other stuff that goes with it, you want to come up here, click on the Save As, and go down to Tools, to the Save As Options, go to Advanced, and scroll all the way down to Preserve Fidelity when sharing this document, and check Save Form Data as Delimited Text File meaning that delimiters or characters that separate one field from the next, like commas, well, I'll show you in just a minute, commas, the more typical one. After you check that, go ahead and click Okie Dokie. And then you want to be able to change it from a Word document to a plain text file. And, of course, you can go ahead and keep the same name or change it. And then when you're ready, go ahead and click Save. And it opens up the conversion window. And you can see down below the preview of it. For every field we have, you see it for the title, there's misses, it's separated by a comma, the delimiter. So comma, dot, comma, warner, comma, the address, and so on. So let's go ahead and say okie dokie, and it's done. Close out of the document here, and we won't save it. Let's close out of that, go to the desktop, and there it is, my new spiffy client dot warner text file. Let me click and drag it over here. And there's the original document here. So that got exported into a simple plain text file that when you double click to open it up, opens it up in Notepad and it's got no formatting, just plain text. And you can see the delimiters that separate each field, the commas, so it knows that that's a separate field, and that would be the first name, last name, and so on. You want to see it in action? Well, I can show you one without getting too detailed because I don't know if you're actually going to be doing this, but for those who do, Here's just an example. Let me close out of here and open up Excel. And then to be able to pull that data from that plain text file into Excel, I can just come up here on the Quick Access Toolbar, click on the Open Folder button, or you can go backstage, File to Open. In any case, if you're looking on the desktop or wherever you put that plain text file, mine's on the desktop, but I can't see it because it's only looking for Excel files and not all files. Select that. 
and there it is, my new spiffy client dot Warner text. Double click on it, and it opens up the text import wizard. Now it says choose the file type that best describes your data. Is the data separated by characters such as comma or tabs? Well, yes, so it's delimited, and the characters are commas, so after you choose delimited, then you can click next to choose your delimiter or character that's separating each field. It's not a tab. You can see down below the preview, it's got the commas there, but when I uncheck tab and choose comma, it replaces the comma with lines to say, okay, we now understand that these are separate fields. It's separated by commas, so when you go ahead and click finish, isn't that cool? Each one gets their own cell. And then you can go ahead and import as many as you like here from all the other client files that you have, one right after another. And then you can, you know, push this row down so you can have a label row. So you can say this is for the title, first name, last name, and so on. In any case, you can watch my Excel training videos on that. But I wanted to show you that plain text, like in Excel here, is very importable. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.